From St Albans to Norfolk, the search is on for a family home under £200,000. Escape to the country in half an hour, here on BBC Two. country as the Grand National approaches, top trainer Nikki Henderson has some big decisions to make. Single mum Mary Meek juggles schooling resources with the school run. What's this? Sneaky little lollipop. Where did this come from? from? <laughs> Cheeky little thing, aren't you? And big money stakes for Charlie Vigers as he prepares four young horses for the sales. Normally when you go and visit a patient in hospital, you can take them a box of chocolates or a magazine or a book to keep them entertained. But not with this fella. He's recuperating at the Equine Hospital, which as you can imagine, with a cast of thousands in Lambourne, is kept pretty busy. We're going to be back to see some of their work later on. But first, we're off to meet Ashley, who's an aspiring young jockey. Nothing new there, except that she's a woman in what is traditionally a man's world. We're keeping you up. What does it matter? It's half past nine at Mark Usher's yard in Upper Lambourne. The stable lads and lasses are already well into their daily routines. It's non-stop, you know, as soon as you finish riding to the waters, sweeping, mucking them out, got to do the graft, you know. 22-year-old Ashley Horton has only been working for Mark Usher for the last six months, but she's already made quite an impression. She's very bubbly, very positive, full of fun. They call her Ash the Dash because she always seems as if she is dashing around the place. She's very, very energetic and nearly exhausted watching her go around the place. In you go, here's a good lad. As if looking after six horses wasn't enough, Ash the Dash is busy chasing her dream of becoming a professional jockey. Since getting her apprentice license, a bit like getting learner plates on your car, she's been taking rides whenever and wherever she can. And I'll never forget the, my first race. It happened very quick. You know, you, you, you remember jumping from the stores and then the next minute you're through the finish, you don't know what's happened. But the experience was great and I knew there and then I wanted to do it as a profession. But the transition from apprentice to professional is tough. Ashley will need to win nearly 100 races. So far, she's ridden in 30 and has failed to notch up a single win. At the moment, all I would like to do is ride a winner. I've had a few seconds and thirds, which have been great rides. I just re really would like to ride one winner and see how it feels to go through the finish first, you know? OK, guys, come on. All right, you lead Ash all the way to Fisher's Hill, OK? She'll lead you all the way there and lead you all the way back, but you lead up there, OK? Yeah. All right, off you go, off you go. It's a gradual process to sort of hone a jockey, if you like. Uh, it's a bit of a case of, you know, many are called and few are chosen, and it's a very, very competitive game. Uh, but as far as Ashley's concerned, you know, she, she's very, very determined, she's very fit. I think that the raw material's there with her, definitely. <laughs> you have to prove you can ride in a race you've got to show you're dedicated you know you've got to do all the extra hours if you have to work your weekends off do all the grafting you want to show your trainer that you're willing to do anything for a ride which i am but it's not just her boss who decides if ash gets to ride in a race novice jockeys rely entirely on the generosity of owners who usually have the final say on the whole, where the opportunity presents itself f for Ashley, uh, they're very, very supportive of her. So that's another reason why um, she, she should do quite well in this yard. Come on, mate. Come on. As I don't have many rides, I can't really practice on the course every day. So I just play around when I'm walking around the yard doing my jobs, just spinning the whip, showing the horse, getting a little tap behind. Despite her hard work and enthusiasm, Ashley faces some long odds. Out of the 437 professional jockeys in the UK, less than 40 of them are women. The biggest hurdle is her gender. Whether it's a, a physical uh, thing or a strength thing, I don't really know, but there's, there's this sort of basic uh, prejudice 
uh, to some extent, and they, they've got a battle against that. But on the other hand, I can't see physically why it should make so much of a difference, really. It's, it's, it's more to do with tradition. Today, Ashley has another chance to prove herself. Mark has given her a ride in the 320 at Southall on Scottish River, one of the favourites. This may be her best chance yet to get that elusive first win. It's a three-hour drive to the race course, but there's just enough time to get a few words of advice first. We'll just say basically what we've said before, which is just... It's a long old way around there, so just keep taps on them, but hold on to them for a little bit longer and just gradually make a run from two out or something like that. But good luck and hope for all the best anyway, OK? It'd be great, wouldn't it, for Ash, first winner? We'll see anyway. I wouldn't like to always hope but never expect. <laughs> I think that's the answer. Will Ashley steer Scottish River to victory? Find out later. as big as this the valley needs a very large hospital and given that most of the residents here are horses it's an equine hospital with 10 vets and six nurses they can treat up to 200 horses a day this morning I'll be trying to keep up with Bobby McEwen one of the practices partners and by the look of his office he's a very busy man you look like you've got plenty of paperwork to get through. I tidied it up for you. Neat, tidy. <laughs> We're on the spot here. Yeah. Um, today we're going to do an operation on tendon, um, which I think you're going to, to, to watch or come and scrub up if you want to. So, better get ready. Let's go. I'm a bit squeamish, I ought to warn you. Um, well, <laughs> tendon injuries are common in racehorses. Today's patient, Taronga, has strained his for a second time, so he's having a wire inserted to strengthen it. Attractive, I think you'll agree. Little white boots as well. And then we have to scrub up and cover the hair as well. While Bobby and I prepare, the anaesthetist is putting Taronga to sleep. Because of his size, it will take several minutes for the injections to take effect. Uh -huh. Lots of people would say this is what I've needed for a long time. <laughs> Soundly asleep, Taronga is winched into the operating theatre. Um, I said the tricky thing is not to touch anything with your hands. It's very difficult not to touch uh, non-sterile things with your hands. OK, guys. Bobby and his team are ready to start the implant surgery, but not before he's given me a much-needed refresher course in biology. The tendon is attached to the muscle, and therefore it causes movement in the leg, basically the lower leg. So it's attached from the muscle to the bone. So when the muscle contracts, it will cause the leg to move. Um, and it's the commonest injury in racing. 46% um, I think of race course injuries are tendon or suspensory ligament damage. So it's probably half of the injuries you see in the race courses are tendon injuries. Bobby starts by making a small incision for the implanter. So we're going as low as possible. There's um, an annular ligament there, so we don't want to hit that. So we just go in straight into the tendon. And then this is the implanter, which is going to go up the tendon. OK. So this is going up the soft core of the tendon, the soft core being where the damage is. And I suppose this is the only tricky bit, is to make sure it goes up the tendon itself. Once the implanter is in place, Bobby inserts a length of artificial cord into Taronga's injured tendon. And what's that made of, Bobby, that fibre? Um, the latest fibre we're using is Terraline, um, which is a very, very strong tensile strength, um, but it has some elasticity. It's not what they use in tennis rackets, is it? No. Uh, yeah, it's absolutely. And Cross Your Heart Bras is where it first originated from. Top. He's a bit light. 
sometimes you withdraw it, and the, uh, the fibre is still in there, but that's empty, like a gun barrel. Just look down there. Over time, the tendon tissue will grow into the implant, creating such a strong bond that, in effect, a new tendon will be formed. And then how long will it take him to feel like a real horse again, to get over the anaesthetic? Um, he will hopefully get up within about half an hour. Yeah, sure. Although he'll be on his feet very quickly, Taronga won't be able to race for some time to come. shocking as well just the whole thing of the haulage of a horse that heavy and that big and hopefully we'll soon come round in about half an hour or so he might be a little sore and wobbly and very disorientated. But in just 20 minutes, Taronga is well on his way to a full recovery. Over at Nicky Henderson's yard, final preparations are underway for one of the biggest dates in the racing calendar. Nicky is one of the country's top trainers and has produced hundreds of winners over the years. But there's one victory that's missing from his CV. The Grand National. All right, all right, Holly. Good for him. All right, Sharon. We've been knocking on the door a few times. We've had a couple of seconds and thirds and fourths, and it's a horrible place to finish because the winner is everything. He takes all the glory, all the money, everything. The guy that finishes second is completely forgotten about. Right, you can go quietly the normal way. This year, Nicky has a difficult decision to make. Nine-year-old Fonmore will be one of Nicky's horses to travel to the Aintree meeting. But he can't decide whether to run him in the two-and-a-half-mile Melling chase or to go for glory in the gruelling four-and-a-half miles of the Grand National itself. So it's always a very difficult decision. It's not as if it's just a decision between one race and another. This is a, a unique race. It's the biggest field that you get in any race in a year. They are different fences. Um, it's highly competitive. Fonmore is a natural over the shorter distance, but will the prestige of the Grand National prove too tempting? Gios on the far side and Fonmore on this side. You know, everybody would like to win the National. It's the most famous race in the world, and I don't think anybody would like to go so they hadn't won it at the end of the day. No, you'd love to. With the help of his assistant, Bunny, Nicky is building a replica of a Grand National fence in the field behind the house. Just as well, we had to have do it once a year, Bunny, isn't it? <laughs> Before he decides, he wants to see if Fonmore is up to the challenge of jumping the big fences. It's just so they, so they, when they go to the first fence, it doesn't take them by complete surprise. I do want them jumping over this rather than through it. They probably only need to jump it a couple of times, if they're good. Right, pretty good handiwork. Yeah. <laughs> there you go, that's how to build an entry fence in half an hour. Yeah. <laughs> hours later and the yard is buzzing with anticipation. Nicky has secretly schooled Fonmore over the test jump and has been seen making several phone calls to the horse's owner. That is going really well. Everyone is waiting for the decision. Will a Henderson horse run in the national? I think it's just a hard decision to make because they obviously worried that they don't want anything to happen to him because he's been such a good horse to the yard and and that and depends, I think, what runs in the other races. And I know it's been hard for Mr. Henderson to decide what to do. I'm sure he'll make the right choice. At last, Nicky makes up his mind. Fonmore will run in the Grand National. We've always thought this horse would suit entry. If you've got a top class, two and a half mile horse that jumps very well and can travel very well, they can stay four and a half. So it's possible. We just moved down a bit. I lost my voice this morning. 
The whole yard seems delighted to be part of the Grand National after all. Find out tomorrow how Fonmore fares in this historic race. Castle Peace near Eastbury, single mum and struggling trainer Mary Meek is getting her youngest daughter ready for the school run. You're having some milk, Megan? Yes, please. Right, OK, here we go. Let's sit up. This is just a typical morning. Megan and Lauren go to school and it's quite hectic in the mornings trying to get everything um, sorted and get them fed and um, organised. It makes it even worse this morning because it's a really foul morning outside, so... Not, not a very nice day. Right, that television's got to go off in 10 minutes. I'll see you later. OK. Have a good day. Bye. Other way, good girl. Other way, good girl. Go on. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Steady now, steady now. Mary staked everything yeah. on becoming a successful right. trainer, but beset by problems, she's finding it tough going. This trying to be a trainer is um, desperately hard. I've got um, I've got three horses in, one of which is not quite ready. The other one's ready, and I can't find a race for it. And the other one is having a bad case of PMT, and uh, I can actually feel my hair going grey. Oh. Ah. In an attempt to sort out Ballock's health problems once and for all, Mary has made a mid-morning appointment with the local vet. I've got the vet coming. Uh, I've got Megan going swimming. I've got a horse entered to run at the end of the week. And I've got a list of things that I have to, to get sorted for the week ahead. It's a difficult balancing act being an owner, trainer and mother. Okay. That's your shorts. Your top. What's this? Sneaky little lollipop. Where did this come from? from? Hey? Cheeky little thing, aren't you? I mean, sometimes in the middle of the night, I, I wake up and I take a few deep breaths and I think, what on earth am I doing all this for? Am I crazy? You know, I'm living in a caravan with two children. You know, why am I here? Why am I doing it? Mary's plans to build a house on the site are dependent on her success as a trainer, which means the family could be staying in their temporary accommodation for some time to come. It's not easy for the children because, you know, whereas with a house they can have sleepovers and lots of different things a lot of the time, um, we're very restricted as to the numbers of people that we can have coming and um, they're just really needing to get into a house now so that we can get some n normality back into our life. Hey, Megan, are we going to go late this morning? Uh, I, I hope not. I don't want to get in trouble. Despite all the difficulties, Mary remains optimistic. I will succeed. I have absolutely no doubt. Um, you just need to get out there and get the experience and uh, that's really what it's all about in racing. It's, it's a numbers game. Having a couple of horses makes life really hard, but um, I certainly believe in myself and I believe in them. And we'll be up at Castle Peace with Mary again tomorrow when the vet will be trying to sort out Ballock's women's problems once and for all. Apprentice jockey Ashley Horton is on her way to Southall Racecourse near Nottingham. The last time she teamed up with this horse, Scottish River, they came second. Today, she's hoping to get her first winner and the odds are in her favour. Five to two today, one of the favourites. Ash the Dash is desperate to become a professional jockey, but she needs to get a few wins under her belt. With a good horse and a smart race plan, today could be the day. 
She's riding in a race that's not on grass, but on the fiber sand, an all-weather surface made of fiber and sand. It's really important to walk a course. I need to plan my route. I need to know where the best ground is. So here at Savo, I think the middle is the best. Hopefully along here at the two, I'll be making my move. I want to follow the leaders and then catch them here at the end. And I want to be here first, hopefully. Well, not hopefully, I will. I will. Half an hour to go and horse box driver James Bennett and stable hand Lee Nunes are making the final preparations. Well, once the saddle's on, we're just going to the main paddock and we wait for Ashley there. And then when she gets the signal, we just give her a leg up and then it's down to her then. A little bit nervous, but once I'm on there, I'll get on with it. So remember what Mark told you? Yes, just let him settle it behind yeah. and hold him as much as I can and make one long race. At the Good. two, go for it. Good. You go out and enjoy yourself and everything you go yes. according to plan, you'll be all right. Yes. Good. There you go. Good boy, eh? As Ashley rides to the start, the heavens open, but James is still upbeat about her prospects. The, the weather won't make a, a great deal of difference to the race. It's just not so nice riding in rain as it is in sunshine. Simple as that. We all like the sunshine rather than the rain. But the, the rain won't bother the Scottish River at all. Yeah. The riders of the 320 at Savile are under starter's orders. It's a tense moment for Lee. As a jockey himself, he knows only too well what a win would mean to Ashley. It will be the biggest weight off her shoulders. The harder you try, you know, the worse it gets. But when it does actually happen, you know, it's the greatest feeling. And, you know, it does give you a lot of confidence for future races. They're off the trips of mile three, and the slow starter was uh, Scottish River. Just doing OK. Hopefully she doesn't rush it now, she'll be there or thereabouts at the end. The advantage of uh, length and a half for two lengths to Charlie Kelly. But as the race reaches the closing stages, it looks unlikely that Ashley will get that elusive first winner of her career. She's at the back of the leading bunch. She'll be lucky to get fourth. A tricky venture goes well. That is Mambra back to the lead now as they drive up towards the line. And Mambra doing enough to win here. To Tricky Venture, who takes second money. Efrina is third. Well clear of Scottish River, who plugged on for four. Not bad, but not great. First number three. She'll get there in the end. Four. Third number five. It's a disappointing result, but as ever, Ash the Dash remains positive. It's a hard course for the horses to run on, especially Scotty as he runs at the back. He's getting sand up his nose and his mouth and his eyes. He's still running on for me, you know? So, try again. As well as being a stud farm, Kingwood offers a buying and selling service for two-year-old horses. And with the sales fast approaching, the stud manager, Charlie, has been asked to sell three horses by their owners and to make a tidy profit. You help Billy with cattle, tacking up, and I will bandage first, then tack up. Dress rehearsal day at Kingwood. The annual breeze-up sales are like a horsey fashion parade, and the two-year-olds that are bred here must learn to behave in front of the crowds of potential buyers. So Charlie has organised a test run. We're going to load them up on a horse box, take them to a gallop that's about two or three miles away from here, so they can gallop on the grass, which most of the work they've done through the winter has been on an all-weather surface but when they come to the sales they have to actually gallop on the grass it's all part of their training so that hopefully when they get to the sales they'll behave well breathe well and ultimately sell well with two-year-olds like these worth up to a hundred thousand pounds it's a vital money maker for the stud and charlie must look after his valuable guests so we put these bandages on 
obviously just to protect the legs from any injury, give a bit of support to the leg and also to protect from any cuts or bangs or injuries they might otherwise suffer. Good boy. Young thoroughbreds can be hard to handle, so the stud hires in freelance exercise riders who can keep these temperamental and fragile horses under control. But with the horses ready to load, Charlie's plans get a setback. One of the jockeys has cancelled and Charlie is left short of a rider. It's vital that these horses get the experience of an away gallop. So he puts in a desperate call to his next door neighbour, trainer Marcus Tregoni. Thanks, yeah. Um, we're just sort of starting to get ready to go, but I was going to ask a sort of favour as well. Would you have a spare jockey? We've had one that's decided to pitch a no-show. No Rissar, thank you very much. Thanks, Marcus. OK, bye now. We sort out a set attack for her, because Marcus has got, is going to send someone over to ride her. The crisis is averted, and it's time for the adolescent horses to be loaded into the horse box. So far, well, sort of so good. <laughs> One of Kingwood's own horses by the stallion Mr. Bailey's will also be going to the breeze up sales. Sorry. That's them loaded at least. Okay. This is a useful test for Charlie. He needs to be sure that on the day of the breeze up sale, the horses won't be spooked by the unfamiliar surroundings. The unexpected arrival of top trainer Marcus Tregoning in the red jacket suddenly ups the stakes for Charlie. This may have been a dress rehearsal, but Marcus could well be a prospective buyer. The pressure is on for the horses to behave. Um, Emily can come up first, you come up second. Be good 20 lengths or so off him and let him run on as much as you can. And then just let the others jog on ahead so you spread out. OK. With the jockeys instructed, it's time for them to ride in front of the group. So this is the Mr Bailey's coming up in front. She should be thinking about quickening up a bit in a minute now. Here she goes. And we like the way he's lowering to the ground there. He'll just, he'll just need to do that once more and he'll be fine at the breeze up sales. Green tambourine, he's come on a lot from the last time he was up here. Still a little bit green, having a look around him, which he's entitled to at this stage. One more spin and that should put him spot on. The long attack, he's just running green and having a look. Fiddy behind, it's her first ever attempt on the grass. Be fairly happy with that. Out of the four going to the sales, it's the stud's own horse, the colt by Mr. Bailey's, that's caught the eye of Charlie's next door neighbour. So, Mr. Bailey's, what do you make? Do you think, what sort of guideline would you say? Hope if he breezes as well as yeah. I know he can go. Yeah. Um, yeah, can you'd be hope he'd be a 30, 40,000. Yeah, he's he's going to be one of the weaker pedigrees in the page, yes. but he's mm. in the catalogue, but he's going to, he's having a winning 30, 40, two year old, may have one or two. Hopefully. It's all gone well for Charlie, and the horses seem to have already sparked some interest ahead of the sales. Let's just hope they can pull out all the stops on the big day. We'll see how they behave and how much they make tomorrow. And we'll also be following Lambourne as it cheers on one of its own in the Grand National. What we're trying to achieve.